Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy. Just hilarious, Charlamagne, the guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Let's get in some front page news. Now, for the first time in five years, taxes are actually due on tax day. All right. So the federal mm. and state taxes are due Monday. Now, usually because of holidays, uh, weekends, and COVID-19, they gave you a little extra time. But no, taxes are due on Monday. So if you don't have your taxes ready, file an extension. But you better pay your taxes because they will be charging you. And I know Uncle Sam listens every morning. So good morning to the IRS office. Good to the IRS, man. What's happening? Appreciate you. The only people that can stick us up and ain't nothing we can do about it. Mm-mm. Okay? Damn. <laughs> Not at all. Mm-mm. By the way, like I always say, I wouldn't have no problem paying taxes if I, I knew exactly where my tax dollars were going. If I could actually see this amount of money that you spent is going here. You know what I actually think they, I wish they would do? I wish they would let us pick where we want our money to go. I don't have no problem, you know, uh, supporting any of Well, they would have to be categories, though, right? Because it, it would have to be like, you know, redoing, restructuring the bridges. It would have to be... I have no problem with that. Schools. I'm, yeah. I'm fine with that. You just want to know where it's going. Let me choose. Let me choose where my dollars you are going. You can't, though. I, because bro, how that's gonna, why it's a hypothetical. I mean, how are they going to send money to Ukraine and, and all those other places that you want, want your money to go I want my money to go over there. Well, that's, that's my why, point. That's why you can't pick it. I want to keep all my money in America. All right? And if I do send it overseas, I want to pick the country. No, you can't. You can't send it to Anguilla. You can't say, okay. I want to send it to Anguilla. I want to send it to Ghana. Yes, absolutely. I said it to Haiti. Damn right. That's absolutely. I but I want to be able to choose where my tax dollars go. That's all I'm simply saying. I probably wouldn't have no problem if I could do that. Also, uh, we got to send a rest in peace to O.J. Simpson. Yeah. O.J. Simpson passed away at the age of 76. He reportedly died after a battle with prostate cancer. You know him professionally. His nickname was The Juice. Uh, and we just want to send a rest in peace to him. There was uh, mixed emotions when he passed away yesterday. Absolutely. Some people were, you know, rest in peace. And one of, the, uh, one, of, one of the greats when it came to the NFL. And then some people were saying good riddance. But... We just want to say rest in peace to O.J. Simpson. Yeah, it's so strange to watch a bunch of grown-ass adults um, say that it was karma, that a man died at 76, 76 years old from prostate cancer. You mm. do realize the average age of a man, um, a lifespan is probably about 74. You do realize mm-hmm. that anybody can get prostate cancer, right? No, I don't know why people know. act like health issues are karma. That's not karma. No. And a lot of them know that they're coming up on their 70s. That's what I'm saying. So like, it's relax. so weird. Like, yep. it's just weird to me. It's karma. No, mm. it's not. He was 76 years old and had prostate cancer. That's right. It's called life. It happens. Right. Now, his family requested privacy and grace during this time of transition on his O.J. Simpson Twitter slash X account, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and also, this is something that Charlemagne and I say all the time. You have to go to the doctor. I know sometimes you don't want to go to the doctor. You don't want to know what it is. But some of these things that that people are passing away from can be prevented, uh, can be cured, can be stopped. So you have to go Mm -hmm. to the doctor. It doesn't matter what you are. Once you get to that age, I know a lot of times we go out, we drink, we have fun and party. But once we start getting older in life, we want to be there for our kids. We want to be there for our family members. So take your ass to the doctor. Yeah, and I mean, the mm-hmm. prostate exam is super uncomfortable, especially when you don't expect one. You know, I went to go get a vasectomy consultation and ended up with a prostate exam. And, you know, I had all type of thoughts going through my head because, you know, when they do the vasectomy consultation, you got to pull your pants down and they got to look at your legs and all of that type mm-hmm. of stuff. And then the doctor's like, you know what? You need a prostate. I'm like, nah, this man think I'm cute. Like, why all of a sudden he want to put his what? finger in? Put and then he said, butt. turn around. Yep. And he, he did it. Yeah, I mean, he, he spun. He spun. No, he I spun. Did. We had a conversation. We had a conversation. I Googled. I texted a few people. I'm just trying to figure out if this is normal. And it's like, boy, turn around and bend over. Come on. Nobody got time for you to call nobody. <laughs> so, so you wanted to have a conversation first before he did. You goddamn right. right. I want to ask questions. That's what you should do with your doctor, dumbass. Absolutely. You don't just go to your doctor and talk. I mean, let your doctor do anything. You talk to him. Figure yeah. it out. But yeah. yes, I'm fine. I don't have a prostate. Did he slap problem. you on your ass when he was done? No. See, this is why people don't be wanting to get prostate <laughs> exams. You gonna, first of all, you're gonna you're gonna give you gonna give positive information right. out there. Tell, tell people, people go, get go it, to the doctor and then make jokes. And then now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you still gonna get these make jokes. Make somebody slap their doctor. <laughs> so don't slap me on my ass. Lord. All right. Well, that is front page news. Get it off your chest. 800 585 1051 If you need to vent, phone lines are wide open again. 800 585 1051 Let's discuss something on your mind, whatever it may be. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ NV Jess Hilarious, Charlemagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. Let's get in some front page news. Now, Tom Brady, uh, he joked that he's not opposed to coming back to the NFL. This would be after his second retirement. I'm not opposed to it. If they would, I don't know if they're going to let me if I become an owner in the NFL team, but I don't know if. Uh, 
I don't know, I'm always going to be in good shape, always be able to throw the ball, so to come in for a little bit, like MJ coming back, I don't know if they let me, but I wouldn't be opposed to it. I mean, the way the rules are set up in the NFL where it's damn near flag football, <laughs> it, it probably would, you know, be okay for him to come back at the tender age of 46 <laughs> and stay in the pocket and just throw the football. It's not like they can hit nobody no more. So yeah. they really can't? Hit, hit I mean, they hit, but barely. It's just, you gotta, they got to be extra, extra careful. On, yeah. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Now we got to talk about Biden. Biden uh, cancels another round of student debt for over 200,000 borrowers. From day one, my administration has been committed to fixing the broken student loan system and making sure higher education is a ticket to the middle class, not a barrier. My administration has approved debt cancellation for 4 million Americans through various actions. And today, I'm announcing new plans that would cancel student debt for millions more. In total, these plans would cancel some or all student debt for 30 million Americans when combined with everything we've done so far. To find out how these plans may impact you, visit studentaid.gov. Round of applause. I'm not mad at that. Drop on the clues bombs. You know, for everybody out there getting yep. their student uh, debt wiped out. But I still think that uh, he should have the people who are getting their debt wiped out doing the testimonials. I agree. I don't want to hear him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't want to hear him. He sound like a corpse up there. Yeah. Like, it don't even sound, like, exciting. <laughs> like, it don't sound, he's, like I said, I always say he's an uninspiring candidate. He has no main character energy. He should have the people who are getting their debt wiped out telling their own testimonials. Yeah, because yeah, there's, there's a lot of testimony. People that tell you they've been paying their, their student debt for, you know, decades, 10 years, you know, 15 years trying to get them down. And yeah. a lot of people, if they finish that debt, like you said, they can start their own business. They can be entrepreneurs. They can get into, you know, purchase just their own home, whatever it may be. Let them be. tell the story. Y'all got, right. all the, y'all got all these political ad dollars. Put commercials together with those people telling the story. I don't want to see it from President Joe Biden. Right, okay? I agree. Now, lastly, Instagram is cutting down on teen sex extortion, and this is how they're doing it. Any parent with, especially teenagers, knows you got to be diligent when it comes to their use of social media. And now Instagram is doing something that's going to help that as well. There's this scam uh, where people are trying to convince teens to send them nude photos and then tell the teens that they'll post the image online unless the victim sends them money or gift cards. The company announced today it's testing new features to curb the crime, including blurring nude images sent in direct messages and letting users know when they've interacted with somebody who's engaged in financial sextortion, as they call it. The FBI says it's seen an increase in finan- in, in these types of cases in recent years, often started by scammers overseas. Instagram says the feature should be available worldwide. I feel so sorry for those kids in the world they have to grow up in, man. Yeah. We did not have those problems. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm all for advances in technology, but that is when I'm not. Mm. Yeah, and it seems like it's getting worse and worse and worse, and I can't see it getting better. Like, I can't see it with the way technology is moving and the way that these kids are on uh, Instagram and Snapchat and YouTube so much. I don't see it getting better. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of parents are using these devices as babysitters, you know? Yep. Yep. I remember Wallow said that, like, technology is now raising your kids. It is. Like, yep. Kids spend more time on technology than they do in your presence. Yeah, even with my my son yesterday, he was on um, Roblox. He was on Roblox. Mm -hmm. And instead of typing in the words... He's talking into he's it so he doesn't it, yeah. have to type it and, and know if his sentence is right or wrong. And I, and I took his phone from him yesterday, but that was the reason why. I'm like, no, like, go do homework. Go read a book. Like, yeah. enough's enough. So, yeah. all right. And that is front page news. What you going to do when the, uh, the chip is available? What chip? Which chip? When, uh, the, like, that stuff like uh, uh, Elon Musk got, like, Neuralink, uh, you know, when they can mm. implement... I don't know the, the, the technical professional words for mm-hmm. it, but when they can put like chat GPT and stuff in your brain. Oh, like you could think uh, about it and then type it out or something? Yeah. Because like, uh, you're going to be, yeah, you, how are you going to compete on stage with a stand up comedian that got that in their brain, Jeff? I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Trust me. They're going to be too quick. You know what I'm saying? Trust They're going to be pulling jokes out the sky. Trust how are you supposed me. to compete if you're mm-hmm. debating with somebody? You know, imagine Dr. Michael Eric Dyson, who we got coming in next, right. debating somebody who got the chip in his brain. Right. The doc, and the doc ain't no joke already. But when you got the chip in your brain and you can just pull out information from all types of different places. But how would that work on stage? I don't understand what you mean. What do you mean? Like you said, they'll just be smarter. They'll just be faster. They'll just be my audience. No, No. the person. No, because you said, imagine me on stage. I said, how you gonna compete? I'm gonna compete with other comedians who have. Yes. That don't mean they're gonna be funny because they just pulling jokes. Yes, they will. (laughs) Hmm. They're gonna be able to pull up anything. Well, I don't compete with comedians anyway. I just do my thing, sweets. Talk that talk. 
Period. Great. No, like, I, 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 I don't know. I've heard Lil Duval say that too as far as like what you going to do when somebody got the chip in their brain. And that's true. It's like when they got the chip in their head and they can just pull up anything. Well, I guess we should. Think about see. ChatGPT. ChatGPT, you can you can literally uh, say, "Hey, write this script about this movie. Write right. a script about a guy in a studio with a crown roll back." And yeah. they'll do a whole movie script in five, three, right. five minutes. And, right. And it's still trash movies coming out. So what, what are we talking about? All right. Yeah, we'll see. We'll I mean, what, are you investing in into something? Like, what did you believe heavily in this? No, I'm just telling you what the future may look like. All right. It may, it may not. We'll no, see. No, it will. It ain't no may. <laughs> it, it may, it no. may not. Hey, may is next month. We <laughs> don't know. It may, <laughs> it, will. it may not. I, I will say this, too. I, I think they have to change the, the, the education and the curriculum because a lot of these students are using chat GPT to write papers. They're using chat GPT to, to pass mm-hmm. tests and pass classes mm-hmm. where they're not actually getting the knowledge. They're going through an app to actually do the work for yeah, them. It's going to be a world of dummies. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So there you go. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is what it is. All right. Now, when we come back, Michael Eric Dice will be joining us. He's going to be speaking at the National Action Network 2024 convention. And we're talking to him next. So don't move. It's The Breakfast Club. Good morning. Wake that ass up. Early in the morning. The Breakfast Club.